Good morning, Pastor Rob here. I got a question. How many of you are the same person you were a year ago, two years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago, 30 years ago? How many of you are the same person? And I'm saying that on the terms of forgiveness, but uh, I'm just thinking if you think you're the same person you were 30 years ago, do what I just did after having a knee replacement and having herniated discs in my back, go outside and try to play football with your son. Not a good idea. Your body will tell you, you are not the same person you were 30 years ago. I just found that out. <clears throat> but um, I was just thinking about that. There's a trend these days to bring up people's past, throw it in their face. Not to say that people's past are stellar or that some things shouldn't be brought up, but it's, it's good to know that um, if you have a rough past or a bad past, that you're no longer the same person you once were. If you're a Christian, if you're trying to be a better person, and then you've walked away from that person you used to be. And I think, man, when I was a kid, I was a kid. I was a, a, a guy. I was a boy. Me and my friend Gary, we did everything together as brothers. And we did everything boys did. We chased girls. We raced cars. We played sports. We had a great time. But I'm no longer that same person. My priority today is my wife, family, and my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And hopefully along the way, as I've gotten older, I can bring some other people with me and encourage them to follow Christ. So I see this latest trend. Let's bring up somebody's past. Let's smear them. Let's tell everybody how bad they used to be. And I think that's a real horrible practice. I'm not saying that some things shouldn't be uh, confronted, but certainly not everything. And so I just want to encourage everybody. I was reading Isaiah this morning. My, by the way, we're reading Romans as well. My son and I read a chapter of the Bible together every day, and I just love that. But if you read Isaiah 53, or excuse me, 43, Isaiah 43, 18 says, Forget the former things and do not dwell on the past. That's a good thing. It's hard to move forward when you're dwelling on the past. Not all, not everybody has a great past. And if you were to remember it, it'd probably bring you down. It would, it would demoralize you. It would discourage you from moving forward. And certainly you don't want people in your past to bring it up your past and throw it in your face if you're a person that's tried to make a change. And I think of that when I did Bible studies in prisons and in the Maryland Detention Center for use down in Maryland. Um, when you went into a cell with a minor that had committed a crime, they had the pictures of their victims in their cells. And I never really understood that, I never looked into it, but I didn't think that seemed very fair to those kids that were trying to move on from the crimes they committed. Because every day they got up and looked at their cell, there was a reminder of the person that they victimized um, when they were younger. And they were, you know, trying to move on is difficult when you have to face it every day. So I don't know the mentality behind that, but I certainly, as a believer in Christ today, and as people who are following Jesus, um, who wants to dwell on the past? Nobody. I want to know that in Christ, all my sins have been forgotten, forgiven, and we can move on. And God, again, looks at us as innocent in Christ. Um, maybe we were guilty of the sin, but certainly our debt and our punishment has been paid. And so forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. Isaiah 43, 18. Another one, Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am the one who blots out your transgressions for my own sake and remembers your sins no more. And then we could turn over to Micah chapter 7, verse 18, where it says, Who is a God like you? We have a wonderful Savior. We have an amazing God. He prefers mercy over judgment. It says, Who is a God like you who pardons sin and forgives the transgression? Uh, <clears throat> he forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance. Who, excuse me, you do not stay angry forever. You delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins under your feet and hurl our iniquities into the depths of the sea. If you've been forgiven, that's God's mentality if you're in Christ uh, for your past. And you've been forgiven if you've asked for forgiveness. Now I want to say that on that line. It's not a license to sin. Paul writes in Romans chapter 3, that our, in verse 5, Romans chapter 3 verse 5, our unrighteousness is not intended to bring out the righteousness of God. In other words, we should not go out and do evil things just so God looks that much better. We shouldn't go out and lie just to enhance God's truth. And we shouldn't go out and do evil uh, if, if we hope that somehow by evil our good will result. And um, I mean, I look at the riots and things like that today. People are dying. Things are being destroyed. Lives are being demolished so that some type of quote-unquote good might come out of it. And really, that's just the wrong way to go about it. We need to come together as a nation and forget our sins of the past, come together as a nation in Christ and go forward. Forgive one another, forgive each other if we've done anything wrong and move on. And God looks at us the same way. If you have a past, it's forgiven, it's forgotten, 
it's gone forever. But that's not a license to go out and continue to sin. It's a continuous, it's the permission to go out and make mistakes. It's a permission to go out in repentance, learn more about yourself, learn more about your sin to walk away from it, and learn more about your Savior. And so uh, that's the thought for today. I see this trend where people's pasts are being brought up and being thrown in their face for something they did 50 years ago or 10 years ago or whatever. And we're not even the same people we were five years ago. And so uh, hopefully that's the case. I uh, Hopefully we're not living in patterns of sin and staying in the ruts that we were stuck in. Hopefully we're moving forward in Jesus Christ. And I want to encourage everybody to do that. Let go of the chains of the past. Get into Christ. Ask for forgiveness and move on knowing that through the scriptures, Isaiah 43 and Micah 7, we just read that we, what we've been forgiven of is forgotten and gone forever. And we are new creatures created in Christ Jesus. So that's the thoughts for today. Romans 3, uh, Isaiah and Micah 7. Everybody have a great day and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.